Well, everybody, and welcome back to D-Ray Shop. Well, it seems like pretty much all your mainstream ATVs and side sites have all gone to fuel injection in one form or another. And we don't have as many problems as we used to with the old carburetors and things, but as these machines have gotten a little on up in age and gained a few more miles and hours on them, they do start presenting with their own form of problems and quirks that you have to diagnose and deal with. Now, today I'm working on a 2016 Polaris 570 XP Ranger Crew. And when this machine came in, it uh, was hard to start. It didn't really want to idle all that consistently, it would die a lot, and it just didn't run all that well. But as far as the self-diagnostic online, it showed no engine faults, no engine codes, or anything like that, so we really didn't have a clue as to what, to, what we're dealing with. But as I had to deal with more and more of these, I seem to run into the same thing. A lot of times it's related to fuel pumps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to diagnose this problem, how to pinpoint it, and how to repair it and actually save you a whole lot of money on the way because if you repair these the way that the manufacturer wants you to, it can be very expensive, but I can show you how to save yourself a lot of money, do it yourself, and uh, get this rascal back up on the road. Now, uh, the procedures we're going to be working on, even though we're working on Polaris side by side, the diagnostic procedures and, and pretty much the repair itself will vary from model to model, but it's going to be pretty much the same thing on any make or model of ATV or side-by-side -side on the market because they all pretty much use the same style of fuel injection systems. So let's dive in on this thing and get started. Now your fuel pump is generally going to be located within the fuel tank. So what we want to do is locate the gas cap and most likely our fuel tank is going to be under that seat. So step one is remove dog from seat. Move it, mate. <laughs> Come on, let's go. We'll raise this back seat up. And what you're going to have under here is your fuse box, or your electronic control unit, and you got a couple of trays on either side. We'll take those trays out, and there's our fuel tank and fuel pump assembly. Here's a good close up shot of our fuel tank and our fuel pump assembly. Now first thing you want to do here is take a few minutes to clean all this area up because this is an area that tends to collect mud and dirt and debris and things and as we're going to be disconnecting some of these things during our diagnostic process you don't want to get a bunch of dirt and stuff in your electrical connections or in the high pressure fuel line. Now another thing I did is uh, this electronics tray here that holds your fuse box and relays and your ECM and everything. Uh, that tray sits right on top of this fuel pump assembly. So what I did is I took the screws out of each end on just the corner and I placed a wooden block under it to space it up to give us a little more room to work. And if we deem that this fuel pump is bad, it'll help facilitate having enough room to remove that fuel pump. Okay, so uh, I guess normally what you'd normally do is just simply turn the key on to see if the fuel pump's actually working. So I'm gonna do that right now. And you can hear the fuel pump cycle. Now if you don't start the motor up, that fuel pump's only gonna run for a few seconds and then turn itself back off until it senses that the engine is actually turning. But as you can hear, you can hear that fuel pump whizzing, but just because it's running does not necessarily mean it's building proper pressure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test our fuel pressure, and we're gonna do it right here. This is your quick connect for your high pressure line that goes to your fuel injector assembly on the engine. So what we'll do is we're gonna disconnect this fuel line right here, and then I'm gonna show you a little test rig that you can hook onto that and very easily test your fuel pressure. Okay, this is what we're going to use to test our fuel pressure. And what we've got is just a fuel injection pressure gauge. It has a bleed valve on it here. And then it has a hose with a, a quick connect that goes to this adapter. And what this adapter is, it basically has the same ends that fits your high pressure fuel line and your fuel pump fitting on the tank. So what we'll do is we'll hook these in, in place of those two connections and just kind of piggybacks it through. Then you take this connection here, hook it into your T-hose like that, and then all we got to do at this point is just cycle the key a few times. We'll bleed the air with this bleeder valve here, bleed all the air out of the system so we can get a good steady reading on the pressure gauge and see if we got sufficient fuel pressure. Typically fuel pressure on most everything that I've worked on is around around 50 PSI and so we'll see if we got adequate fuel pressure there. Now uh, you can get these gauges just about anywhere. Uh, you can of course you can buy them from Snap-on, places like that, but also parts stores such as O'Reilly's, Napa, AutoZone, things like that. I think I've even seen the things at, at Harbor Freight. And they're not very expensive, and uh, man, they're a real handy tool to help you 
figure out if this fuel pump's working or not. So let's go hook this thing up and see what we got. So I'm gonna disconnect this high pressure line here. What I wanna do is have me a rag handy in case there's any excess pressure on the line. We can soak that up, keep from having a fire hazard. Now this thing has a little quick connect clip on it and all you gotta do is just kinda spread the ears and pull the connector back. Just like that. All right, now that unlocks it. Then you wanna very carefully pull that connection up. And there again, have that rag handy in case there's any fuel spray. All right, we leaked just a little fuel, but not bad, so it's good. All right, we'll pull that out of the way. Now, we wanna make our connections with our adapter harness. So what we're gonna do is take this end, plug it into that fuel line, lock the clamp, then pull on it, make sure we got a good snug connection. Same way with this one. Take this connector, slide it down over the fuel pump till you hear it click, then give it a good tug, make sure it's good and tight. Now, this is the end that goes to our fuel gauge. We've already got it hooked up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route this around up under to the front seat so I can have it close to the, to the ignition switch so I can cycle the key a few times and watch directly what's happening with our fuel pressure. I'm about to test our fuel pressure and what I've got here is a little plastic jug that I'm going to collect the, the fuel in as I bleed the air out of it after I cycle the key a few times. Uh, that'll help get all the air out of there so we can get a good reading. And I also want to take a look at our fuel quality, see what kind of fuel we're running in there. So I'm going to, it's going to be kind of hard for me to do without getting in the camera shot. So I'm just going to hold this down and hold this jug here and I'm going to cycle the key. And I'm going to continue to cycle it several times until we get nothing but a straight shot of fuel from this bleeder. Okay. Now we're getting nothing but fuel there now. So I'm going to let off of that bleeder. I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to zoom in here so you can get a good shot at this pressure gauge. Now we're going to cycle the fuel and we'll see what our true fuel pressure is. Uh, looks like we're getting less than 30. Let's cycle it again to see if it gets any better. A little bit more. Let's cycle it one more time. Okay, it looks like we're not going to get anything much over 30 PSI, which we should be up here at 50, and it shouldn't take uh, several cycles to do it. That fuel pressure should come straight up to 50 and hold right there. So that tells me that we have a weak fuel pump. One other thing I want to show you is this is the sample of fuel that I ran through that gauge. And if you look at it there, that fuel looks really dirty. It's got some real, real fine particulate matter in it there. It's kind of, kind of turning it brown almost. And uh, this type of matter that goes, it'll go through the fuel filter. Uh, the fuel filter won't collect that stuff that's that fine. It'll work its way through there. And that's what generally it won't uh, cause your pump to fail, but it'll just prematurely wear it where now the pump is bypassing it, it can't create the proper pressure. And this, this old dirty fuel here is what gets them every time. Sure enough, just thought I'd show you that. All right, now that we've determined we've got a bad fuel pump, should be just a simple matter of replacing the pump, right? Well, uh, it's not always that easy. And this is the problem that we run into. Uh, for this particular application, 2016 Ranger 570 XP Crew, when you go to the dealer to price a fuel pump, they do not service the fuel pump separately. You have to buy the, the entire fuel tank with the pump pre-installed in it. And retail on that thing is over $700. For other applications, you can get just the drop-in pump assembly, but it's still sometimes two, three, four hundred dollars $400 for that whole assembly with the fuel gauge sender and all that attached to it. But if you get to do a little research online, you can find, like I have, that you can buy just the pump itself, just the actual fuel pump. And I've, what I'm going to show you here in a little bit is a kit that I got for less than $30. It has just a fuel pump, it's got a new sock filter, and it has all the, the components and parts you need to refurbish the drop-in unit that goes in the tank. And I'm going to show you what that is, and I'm going to show you how to repair it. <music> 